Setting type in Adobe Illustrator is fun and challenging, and it takes a little practice. This is a very basic introductory demonstration into setting type using Adobe Illustrator CS6. I will introduce you to headline versus body copy. We'll import some text. We'll set the font family and font size. We'll kern a headline. Then we'll work with the tracking and letting for the paragraphs of text. And then I will show you how to thread type from one column to the next. So what I have here is I have a headline and I also have a subheading. Now this headline of text I have already formatted for you using the character panel. And there are a couple of things when I'm setting type that I like to have available and visible at all times. That is the character and paragraph floating panels. If they're not available to you here, you can go under Window, Type, and bring out Character, and Window Type, bring up Paragraph Floating Panels. Now you can't see that here, I apologize. Within the demonstration, this is a very long menu, but it's down in the T's under Type. If I bring up the Character Panel, you can see that I've got this headline in, it's, it's kind of a novelty font family. We've got Nutra text. It has kind of an um, Art Deco style to it. But notice here that my kerning is um, not set to auto. When you first type something in, Adobe Illustrator attempts to kern that kern all the letter forms for you. Remember kerning applies to the space between two individual letters. I like to do this visually. If I think that the space between the T and the Y is less than the space between the Y and the P and other letters consistently throughout the word then I might make an update to that. If I choose my type tool and click in between the two letter forms I can kern the spacing between those and I can select a positive number to add more space between those two letter forms. I can click away and see how I think that looks and if that looks a little bit more comfortable for me I can look for other areas like maybe between the R and the A looks a little thin. Again I can click between those two letter forms and I can add a little bit of more space using my kerning. So it's important to note that uh, Illustrator doesn't always do a perfect job of setting type, but particularly in headlines where the type size is larger and it's easier to see those discrepancies. So I have to make those changes myself. Now another thing I'd like to do is I want to align these bits of type on the artboard. Um, the first thing I'm going to bring up is my rulers, showing the rulers. You can see I'm working in inches. If I hold the control key down I can change what type of measure that I'm showing this in and I'm going to keep it set to inches. If I was working on a web page I might have it set to pixels but in this case well, I'm going to keep it set to, pick to inches but that's how you can change the units of measure by holding your control key down clicking on the ruler and you can change it there. Another thing I can do with the ruler showing is I can drag guidelines onto the artboard. If I click on the ruler and drag I could set guidelines at the half inch to the left, half inch from the top, and half inch from the side. Or I can change that to a quarter inch. And this is how I begin to um, set the spacing for my document. I might have a little more space in the top than I do with the margins on the side. That's up to you. Now if I select these two items, I can hold the shift key down to select both items and I want to left align them. So I can bring up my alignment panel under Window and Align. And you can see I have all sorts of options here. Now I want to align these left, so I'll click on Horizontal Align Left. And we'll leave this alignment panel up because I tend to use it a lot. Uh, another thing I could do is I can pull these into place and using my arrow keys on the keyboard I can make it so that those lines line up precisely with 
these guidelines that I've drawn here. The next thing I want to do is I want to import some text. And this is a very typical workflow where you create a column or area type. We're going to set the area type like so to create this, col this first column. And I'm going to import some text. And to do that, I will go under File and Place. And I can select some type that I have here for you. I place the text. And I'm going to use the default settings. Notice that you have a few um, options if you wanted to remove extra spacing that might exist between paragraphs. You can do that. Um, if there's any extra spaces, you can replace. But we'll keep that for now. Click on OK. And it pulls in some text for us. Now it's got a headline here, which we already have, so we don't need that. I'm going to delete that headline. Click just before the W and click delete to get rid of that extra space. What happened here? What do you suppose this is? It's actually a code for what was an apostrophe in the word can't. So I can select that code. Sometimes when you import text, this happens. So you have to go through and check and see where there's been some unusual characters. I'll move this so it's out of our way. So I've imported some text successfully. Excellent. Very exciting. Um, one of the things that we'll notice is that um, this text, when you place the text, it comes in using my default font family, which in this case is Myriad. I'd like to use a little easier to read typeface. So I am going to select my font family here using the character panel and find something that's just a little easier for you to read. Let's go with maybe Tahoma. That's a pretty easy one to read. Another thing to note is that we don't use a novelty typeface like Nutra text in body copy. That's one of the differences between headlines and body copy. Body copy, it is important that you have an emphasis on legibility um, and very, very, very rarely, in fact, I can think of no occasions where you would use a novelty typeface and body copy because remember you want people to be able to read what you're putting down on paper. Another thing that I would do if I look at this type is I would probably add a bit more letting or space between the lines of text and make it a little bit easier to read. The default letting is set to about 120% um, coming from Illustrator. I like to go 130 to 150%. So I'm going to go ahead and set the letting by using my selection tool. I can click and select that text box and set the letting for the entire text box. I can also add a little bit more tracking to the text box if I think that there if I think that the type's a little too tight, I can add just a little bit more space between the letter forms by setting the tracking. If I click away, then I can see that that has gotten a little bit easier to read than it was before. Again, we're always going to emphasize legibility when it comes to body copy. The next thing that I want to show you is how to thread type from one column to another. And to do that, I have to create another area type text box. I can click and drag and create the column. It doesn't matter if it's perfectly aligned at this point. I can, I can reset that at any time. And once I do that, I can use my selection tool and I'll show that I have this empty text box selected. Now if I want to associate these two, I can do that by clicking on this top left box and clicking on the little red plus sign. The little red plus sign indicates to us that this text box has overset text, which means there's more text than can fit in this box. So if I click here and then click on this one, but I have to have them both selected. Hold down the shift key, have them both selected to associate. 
I click on the top left, click on the plus sign, notice how it's giving me this little, the cursor changes to this little paragraph symbol. I click here and now we have threaded the text from one text box to the next. The interesting thing is I can break that at any time if I, want, if I wanted to. I can break that link by clicking here and then the cursor changes to the broken link symbol and click so I can disassociate text box at any time. But right now I want to associate these two so I am going to link them. Another thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to align these text boxes. So I'm going to hold the shift key down to select them both and I'm going to top align them. Vertical align top. And I'm, what's great about that is now that these text boxes are similar in size, they're going to end kind of at the same space. Now obviously if I had more room to show you, we wouldn't have overset text. We would continue to thread the text into other columns, um, but we are limited on space. And I just wanted to show you at this point how to thread the text from one column to another. A really great resource that I encourage you to visit that gives you some basics on typesetting rules is located here at Designer Insights. And here is a URL that you might check, designerinsights.com, designer-resources, learn to typeset like a true print designer, this page here gives us some great resources from Designer Insights and it really gives you an excellent demonstration on bad typesetting versus good examples of typesetting easy to read titles where the, 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 um, the capitals have been kerned, a nice quote with the hanging quote outside of the margin so that this type aligns up very nicely. Um, nice flow of text from one text box to the next has been threaded and then the leading and the tracking has been set. So this is a really good example because then it takes you through a great typesetting job and shows you what actually went into all of the details, all of the settings in Illustrator in order to typeset this paragraph or two. Notice how this bit was off by itself and then they brought it back in so that it didn't dangle. You know, you don't want widows or orphans as your typesetting. So a widow is a very small line or a single word left alone at the end of a paragraph and an orphan is a word or short line at the beginning or end of a column. So you want to avoid widows and orphans and this demonstration is wonderful because it, it gives you an opportunity to learn how to avoid that. So I encourage you to visit this page to learn some more details on typesetting rules. And this concludes your introduction to Typesetting Basics with Adobe Illustrator CS6.